Hello there, I'm Jake Bamford. I've been in the bus industry since 1997 and I've owned a preserved bus since 2001. And this is one of my vehicles, a 1980 Leyland Leopard coach. In duple dominant bodywork, new to Mason and District and later with Hastings and District. She sounds lovely. So this is going to be a series of YouTube videos about the logistics and legalities and the fun of owning buses. But now whether you want to use a bus for preservation, whether you want to use a bus as a mobile home, a shop or any other business opportunity, even if you want to run a bus as a wedding bus or anything like that, stay tuned. I hopefully will have all the answers and what's involved and try and cover as much as I can over the next few videos. Hello and welcome. In this episode, we'll be looking at whether you need to tax your bus. Now that might seem like a bit of a stupid question with an obvious answer. However, all over eBay and Facebook and other selling platforms as well, you'll see adverts for buses and other vehicles too. And it will say tax exempt, which gives the implication that you don't actually need to tax the vehicle at all. And for those of you who aren't used to dealing with things like this, it can get quite confusing. So to clarify, if you've got an old vehicle like one of these ones here that was built over 40 years ago, now by over 40 years, that refers to the registration date. At the moment it's rolling, which means every year it moves forwards. Um, I did this video in November 2023 and at the moment the rolling date is any vehicle that was registered before the 1st of January 1983. If your vehicle was registered before this date you can apply to have it moved into the taxation class of historic vehicle as seen on this example logbook. Now there's several criteria for your vehicle to fit into this category and one is that it cannot be substantially changed. Now, when they say a substantial change, they mean things like you're cutting it in half, adding extra axles, um, things like that. If you have to repair or replace bits of the chassis, or if your engine goes pop and you replace it with a similar engine, things like that, that is not a problem at all. And interestingly, there is a little clause in there as well that if you want to replace your engine with a greener, more environmentally friendly unit, then you can do that and that's accepted as well. However, if you look on this uh, example V5 logbook, you'll see that listed on there is the number of seats. It says 78 seats and it's a historic vehicle. So it would be argued and potentially argued that if you bought a bus with 78 seats in it and then removed the seats to turn it into a mobile home or a cafe or such, that could be regarded as a substantial change. Now, you do need to check these things thoroughly before you set out to convert your vehicle or before you even set out on the road to drive your vehicle. The DVSA do operate checkpoints around the country at certain points. They check heavy goods vehicles and uh, all sorts of continental left-hand drive lorries as well as dodgy Ford Transit vans as well and once they've finished checking those they will check your vehicle if they see it coming down the road and they're not just interested in if you've got dodgy tyres or your vehicle's belching out lots of smoke they check all your paperwork your entitlement to drive and of course if the vehicle is taxed and insured and if it's in the right taxation class as well and so the next criteria that your vehicle must meet is, as we've mentioned before, that it is over 40 years old. It's been registered before the rolling date for the exemption. So if you're lucky enough to have a vehicle like this, 
you will still have to tax it, but you will have a nil tax rate, as you can see on this V11 reminder. And if you don't want to tax it, it must still be sawned. But when you tax it, you will have to fill out this exemption declaration. Now, just because your vehicle is MOT exempt, that doesn't mean that you don't have an obligation to keep it safe and roadworthy because you do. So you do need a maintenance plan in place to keep your vehicle roadworthy and safe. So there's one last criteria for your vehicle to meet before it can go into the historic vehicle category. And that is that it cannot be operated commercially. So if you want to use it as a mobile restaurant or you want to use it for doing weddings or anything like that, you will need to keep it taxed as a bus. And don't forget, you will also need an operator's license as well if it's hire and reward. So then what happens if your bus is a lot newer and younger than 40 years old like this rather nice Dennis Dart? Well, again, if you want to use it commercially, it's going to have to stay as a bus, I'm afraid. Now, if you just want to use it privately and take it to bus rallies and show it to people, the adoring public, you can get it, in my experience, moved into the taxation class of private light -like goods, which might seem strange considering a bus is probably the last thing you'd describe as a light goods vehicle. So, what if you want to take the seats out and turn your bus into a mobile home? Well, there is a category called large private HGV and that category is what they use for taxing and classing the large American Winnebago type motorhomes and no matter what bus you use for your conversion it will more than likely exceed the three and a half ton weight limit even with all the seats removed. So what about operating it commercially as a shop or something like that? Well if you remove the seats and operate it commercially you would be basically turning your bus into a lorry which would mean you'd have to tax it in the heavy goods vehicle category but whatever you do it's always best to get proper qualified advice about this sort of thing so it's always best to speak to the dvsa about any potential conversion you might have in mind and what to do with it legally well, I hope this guide has been of some assistance to you. As I said before, always please make sure you check legally what you can and can't do. And if you've liked this video, please like it, share it and subscribe to my channel for more updates and more in this series regarding owning a bus. Many thanks for joining me. Bye bye.